Yeah, State Senator Dave Min, I have the privilege of representing the 37th Senate District in the heart of Orange County. This is a district that includes my home city of Irvine, as well as cities uh, including Huntington Beach, Newport Beach, Laguna Beach, Costa Mesa, Tustin, Villa Park, Anaheim Hills, Orange, Lake Forest, and Laguna Woods. I want to welcome you all to this very important seminar about how we can protect ourselves from frauds and scams. Uh, this is a potentially devastating and unfortunately far too common problem we see, particularly among seniors. The Federal Bureau of Investigation estimates that seniors nationwide lose more than $3 billion, with a B, every year uh, of their hard-earned savings due to fraud. But you don't have to be a senior citizen to benefit from the advice you'll hear today. I think folks of all ages really can benefit from the tips provided by our experts. This issue is near and dear to my heart because my family's personal inf uh, personal information has been breached several times. I was a victim of the Equifax breach, the T-Mobile breach, and then as a former employee of the University of California, when they had a breach, I found out that my children and myself and my wife, uh, that all of our information was on the dark web. I had to sign up for fraud alerts, and I periodically will get alerts uh, notifying me, me that my information, my social security number, my kids' social security numbers are available on the dark web. That's something that I have to deal with for the rest of my life, and unfortunately that my kids will have to deal with for the rest of their lives. And it was one of the drivers for me wanting to create the Select Committee on Cybersecurity and Identity Theft Prevention in the State Senate so that we could better try and understand this issue and look for solutions to protect people from the more and more complex types of fraud that we are experiencing. While that work is ongoing, uh, today we're going to focus on practical steps that you can take right now to protect yourselves from fraud. Our first presentation will be from Stephanie Gutierrez Valdez, representing the Contractor State License Board. Next, Destiny Flores will offer insight from the Department of Insurance and then finally, we'll hear from Jackie Wiley on behalf of the California Department of Financial Protection and Innovation. If any of you have questions, please feel free to type them into the chat. And at the end of the webinar, our experts will answer as many of your questions as possible. Thank you so much for spending some time with us today. I hope this is valuable for you, that we can uh, prevent fraud and that you are able to keep your hard earned savings. Uh, and so with that, I'll pass it over to Stephanie to get us started. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Senator Min, and thank you, Senator Min's office, for the great opportunity to present at this Senior Scam Stalker Seminar. Today, I'm going to be talking about uh, what seniors should know about construction scam. So let me share my screen. So my name is Stephanie Gutierrez Valdez, and I am the outreach coordinator for the Contractor State License Board. So a little bit about the Contractor State License Board. Our goal is to protect California consumers. So the Contractor State License Board actually falls under the umbrella of the Department of Consumer Affairs, and we license and regulate nearly 300,000 contractors in 44 different classifications. And classifications include um, industries such as plumbing, roofers, and painters, just to name a few. In addition, the Contractor State License Board conducts uh, weekly stings and sweeps throughout the state of California to uncover unlicensed and unscrupulous contractors. So why are seniors targeted in construction scams? First and foremost, seniors are trusting, which can make them particularly vulnerable. Secondly, Unlicensed contractors will try to manipulate seniors in order to um, take advantage of their wealth and uh, trust. And this is because scammers are attracted to seniors' life savings and pensions. So scammers will uh, know that seniors have worked their entire lives and have equity in their home and get great uh, retirement and pension benefits. So you may be asking yourself, how can I, as a senior, protect myself from common construction scams? So first and foremost, we 
uh, advised do not answer your door to strangers selling their services. So one common uh, construction scam is uh, the door-to-door -door salesman. So oftentimes you get people knocking on your door and offering uh, services that seem good, too good to be true. So they'll say, hey, I'm in the neighborhood. Um, I have some leftover materials and supplies, and I see that you need a new roof. How about for a good deal, um, you give me this money and I can take care of this roof. Um, th the best way to protect yourself from this is just don't answer the door. You're not there. Just keep the door closed if you don't recognize who's at the other side of the door. Secondly, just say no and keep saying no. So no is going to be the best way you can protect yourself from being taken advantage by these unlicensed and unscrupulous contractors. So don't be afraid to just say no. Don't be afraid to be mean or just feel like you have to be nice. Just say no. Also, do not make any cash payments because what's going to happen is you're going to give this individual money up front and what are the chances that they're going to come back? Very few. In fact, they could be halfway to Disneyland with your money and you have no protection or way to get that money back. Oftentimes, the best way to make payments is either through a cashier's check, a credit card, because there is more protection. And if that individual doesn't come back, you can all um, you not only have a paper trail, but you can cancel that by working with your bank. Also, get everything in writing. So verbal agreements are not binding. If it's not in writing, it did not happen. So make sure you get everything in writing, whether that be the initial uh, work contract or any change modifications going forward through the project. Because oftentimes, you know, some situations may happen when you're working with the contractor and, you know, like a new uh, specification may have been needed to add it to the contract. So please get that in writing and make sure you keep that in a safe and secure location. Just remember this. So down payments per California law can only be 10% or $1,000 of the contract price, whichever is less. So regardless of the price of the total contract price, whether it be 100,000 or 90,000, it's gonna be 1,000 or 10% whichever is less. So don't fall victim to any uh, like a common contractor scam of large money up front. So always make sure you check the contractor license number to make sure it is current and in good standing using our um, website at www.cslb.ca.gov or by calling our 800 number 800-321-2752. So if you've been scammed, what can you do? So first and foremost, you can make a call to the contractor state license board. And we have individuals who can take that call and um, follow up and investigate. We also have a, a file of complaint on our homepage at www.cslb.ca.gov. Or you can email cslbinfo at cslb.ca.gov. And we have individuals ready to assist you. So what can you do in terms of hiring the right contractor for you? So first and foremost, we advise always get at least three bids. And what you're going to do is you're going to look at those bids and make sure they're going to fall within the same price range. So you get a price range from three contractors saying $5,000 for this project, $5,000 for this other project. But then we have another contractor saying this project's 10000 but why if these other two are quoting you 5,000? So that right there should raise some red flags because they could either be overcharging you or may not even uh, be doing the project and they may just be there to take your money. So make sure you ask those questions. Also on the other end of it, what if you get a quote for $2,500, right? That should also raise a red flag. And that's because a, a contract that's significantly lower then what has been quoted may fall the risk of that individual not completing the project or doing that project in a bad manner that could actually jeopardize and cause more issues down the line. So they may use subpar product, actually. So right then and there, make sure you're looking at bids that fall within the same price. Secondly, 
make sure you ask to see the contractor's pocket license and a current photo ID. So off to the side here, um, there's an example of what a uh, contractor's pocket license should look like. And all, contractor, all licensed contractors through the Contractor State License Board are issued a contractor's pocket license. And what you're going to look for is one, the expiration date to make sure that they're still an active um, and in good standing with the Contractor State License Board. And secondly, you're going to make sure to see that the name on their contract, contractor license and their photo ID matches, because if this person does not look like a John Smith, then chances are they're not John Smith. Also, make sure you ask for proof of their liability insurance and workers' compensation insurance. And you can do that either by asking the contractor directly for verification you can use our website or you can contact the Department of Insurance to verify. And you want to make sure that they have active workers' compensation insurance because if an individual working on your property or a subcontractor gets injured on your property, you as the homeowner are going to be responsible for that um, accident. So make sure you have workers' compensation insurance. This is only just to protect yourself. Also, Make sure to get a detailed written contract before you make a down payment and before work begins. So make sure that you understand the contract and ask questions. Maybe take the time to ask a trusted friend or family member to review the contract with you um, before going forward. And make sure to not let down payments get ahead of the work. So don't pay for work that has not been completed to your satisfaction. So each... Uh, Part of the project should be on the um, home improvement contract and what's called a work payment schedule. So before um, you give them payment, make sure it's done to your satisfaction. And if that contractor, a licensed contractor is giving you a hard time, please feel free to reach out to the contractor state license board because we have a uh, mediation unit free of charge for consumers where we can um, talk to that uh, co contractor on your behalf. Also, you want to make sure that when looking at the work payment schedule, that the contract is not what is considered front loaded. And what front loaded means is that you're paying for a significant portion of the total payment up front. So if it's in three stages for a $10,000 project and you're paying $8,000 for just one third of the work before the other two thirds are completed, that right there should be a red flag. So as I mentioned before, you want to make sure that you pay no more than 10% of the total contract price or $1,000, whichever is less. And I want to make sure that individuals understand this because no matter how often we ad advertise it, um, unfortunately, people do fall victim to um, unlicensed and unscrupulous contractors and paying more up front. So just don't do it. Also, make sure you keep all project documents, payments, photographs in a job file. And this is just to protect yourself and make sure you have documentation. So if there's any issues or complaints on your behalf, you have proof of this project um, and it's only going to protect yourself. And just remember that in California, seniors have four years from the date of the construction to file a complaint. But don't wait the full four years. As soon as you notice there's any issues or you feel like you want to file a complaint, please do it and just take it care, take care of it because we are here to help. And the sooner we know that this is an issue, the sooner we can jump in on your behalf. And also, per California law, anyone over the age of 65 or older has five business day right to cancel any contract. So to protect yourself, do not let work begin during that time. For anyone uh, 64 or younger, that is going to be three business days to cancel the contract. So solar is a big concern and a big talking point right now. And I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about if solar is right for you. So the first thing you wanna consider before um, investing in solar is consider the length of time in your home. So if you're gonna be selling your home in the foreseeable future, maybe solar isn't right for you because it does take time to recoup the cost savings. So just consider that before investing in solar. Also consider the roof direction. Some roofs are not ideally positioned for solar. 
also, if there's any blockage or obstruction, whether that be tall buildings or trees, maybe solar isn't right for you because that is not going to ensure that you maximize the power of solar. Also, do the math with solar and make sure you look at your monthly statements. So on the Contractor State License Board, we have our Solar Smart uh, webpage, and you can go ahead and use it to review and consider other solar resources, including um, our payment calendar or calculator, which you can use to see if solar is right for you based off of cost savings. So remember that solar is not free. So you want to be aware of any financing programs of, such as PACE, HERO, CHIEF, or REAL. And this is because they come with high interest rates that are tied to your property tax. So we've had a lot of individuals calling and complaining because they've signed up for solar. And unfortunately, when they get their property tax, they're not able to make the payments and they've lost their homes because they can't make that higher uh, property tax payment. So beware of that. Always ask questions and make sure you understand what it is that you're signing before proceeding with uh, any solar financing programs. So how can you protect yourself from solar fraud? So first and foremost, as we mentioned, you do not let the payments get ahead of the work. So make sure you pay once that portion of the work is truly done to your satisfaction. Also, get everything in writing and make sure you understand the contract terms. We actually received a call a, a while ago about an individual who encountered a door-to-door -door salesman in Central Valley. And this lady was around 93, 94 years old, um, only spoke Spanish. And this salesperson spoke to her entirely in Spanish um, when he was doing the sales pitch. But when it came time for her to sign the contract, it was in English. She didn't understand what it is that she's signing. And what are the chances that that salesperson told her the truth and was completely transparent about what it is that she's signing, which right there, that's a big red flag. So before you even sign, make sure you understand. And if it's a digital contract that you're signing, make sure you get that printed and secured in a safe spot. Because with all these uh, digital um, tools at our disposal, it's so easy for anyone to alter any digital copies. So just make sure you save that and um, keep that in a secure location. So you want to make sure you always check a license and hire licensed contractors for any jobs worth $500 or more for labor and material. And be aware of individuals calling themselves handyman, particularly licensed handyman, because A, there's no such thing as a licensed handyman. That's not a license in the state of California. Secondly, um, you want to make sure that for a licensed contractor, you, um, you use them for any project worth $500 or more. And if they're unlicensed, they cannot split up a project to fall within that $500 or less uh, price limit. So, for example, if you're remodeling a bathroom, an, in, an unlicensed contractor or quote unquote handyman cannot uh, quote you $300 for a new sink, $400 for lights. 500 for a new tub that's not so you want to make sure that the total total project is $500 or less if you're going to be hiring an unlicensed contractor so I want to leave you with this quote from our registrar David Fogg so the best way seniors can protect themselves against construction fraud is to check a license on our website and always get at least three bids so the best protection against fraud is always do your research and educate yourself. Always be on the lookout and be aware of anything that may sound too good to be true. And off to the side, I do have my contact information. So if there are any questions, um, please feel free to hold off till questions and answers. Or if I'm not, if you're not able to stay till the end, please feel free to email me and I will be uh, happy to get back to you. Um, thank you, everyone. And I'm going to go ahead and pass this presentation off to Destiny Flores from the California Department of Insurance. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, let me share my screen. Okay, well, good morning. And thank you for the opportunity to be here today. Again, my name is Destiny Flores, and I'm with the California Department of Insurance. 
So let's get started. Um, I'd like to start off with a brief overview of the Department of Insurance and then discuss common insurance scams and then close with resources available to you from the department. Uh, the California Department of Insurance is a state agency and we regulate the insurance marketplace. We regulate all lines of insurance, uh, homeowners, auto, life, and health, just to name a few. We also regulate the insurance companies, the agents and brokers that sell insurance, as well as oversee insurer solvency, uh, licensing agents and brokers, con conducting market conduct reviews, resolving consumer complaints, and investigating and prosecuting insurance fraud. So as a consumer, if you ever have a problem with your insurance company, agent, or broker, please call us for help. Uh, so before we get started, I'd like to reflect on what the Department of Insurance accomplished for California consumers last year alone. Um, our Community Relations and Outreach Branch, which is the branch I work for, hosted 875 events and reached more than 60,000 consumers. Uh, the rates, regulation, and legal branch helped return over $3 billion to consumers due to their reduced driving and business activities uh, during the pandemic. And the consumer uh, services team helped consumers recover over $166 million in insurance benefits. Uh, so reports indicate that seniors are the largest population targeted for scams. So why are seniors big targets? Well, because seniors have accumulated wealth. Seniors may have money accumulated in their homes, their life insurance and retirement savings. And someone wants to steal a piece of your hard earned savings. Uh, the good news is, is that there are a lot of protection programs for seniors. So let's talk about uh, popular uh, scams. So there are four things that you should be aware of when it comes to COVID-19 scams. So scammers are out there preying on COVID-19 fears by offering COVID-19 tests or cures in exchange for personal information. However, the services are unapproved. Uh, fraudsters are using phone calls, text messages, social media, and door-to-door -door visits to steal your information. So number two, uh, scammers use the personal information that they collect to fraudulently bill federal healthcare programs or commit Medi-Cal identity theft. And if Medi-Cal or Medicare deny the claim, then you could be held responsible for the cost. And number three, COVID-19 fraud is rapidly evolving. So be cautious of unsolicited requests for personal information, especially Medicare and Medi-Cal account numbers. Uh, be suspicious of unexpected phone calls, text messages, or visitors offering COVID-19 tests or supplies. And do not open emails from unknown um, individuals with hyperlinks and texts about COVID-19. Um, ignore offers or ads for testing or treatments on social media. And also, if you suspect fraud, take action and report it immediately. So one of the most popular scams involving insurance is an annuity. So Californians spend an average of 20 billion on annuities, and that's a lot of money to be made by scam agents. An annuity is a contract between you and the insurance company. So you buy it by making one are more premium payments and they in return make income payments to you for a fixed period of time in the future. It's often used as an investment vehicle for retirement income. It's sold by licensed insurance agents, usually with the financial background. Growth in annuities are also tax deferred. Um, annuities are great for some, but lousy for others. And why? Usually because of the seven year surrender charge. There is a big penalty for you to take out uh, your money if you need it, maybe in a case in case of an emergency. But remember that agents love to sell it because of the big upfront commission. 
Be cautious of agents that get you into one annuity and then 12 months or 18 months later call and say they found a better annuity for you and you need to switch now. So what does that mean to you is that you may be hit with the penalty for early withdrawal, but it's more upfront commission for the agent again, and you might even have a tax implication on top of it. But if you have a financial advisor who you've been working with for years and they know your financial goals, financial picture, your risk tolerance and suggest adding an annuity to your portfolio and explains the type of annuity, the pros, the cons, and why it makes sense as part of diversifying your portfolio, then an annuity can be the right investment for you. Uh, remember to not make the decision to buy an annuity right away, sleep on it and think it over with a family member or someone you trust. If the annuity is a good deal today, it will still be a good deal tomorrow. Uh, other common insurance scams include premium theft and auto stage accidents. Premium theft occurs when you buy an insurance policy from an agent or broker and they never actually buy, place, or buy the policy with the insurance company. And you're now thinking to yourself, well, how can that happen? Well, did you get a receipt? Do you have a receipt? Or do you have a copy of the policy? Uh, did you get a statement? So some scam agents, whether they are currently licensed or not, will go great lengths to steal your information. So let me share our latest arrest of an agent from San Clemente. So a man was arrested after our investigation found he allegedly stole over 1.2 million from more than 20 victims, including 14 seniors. He is being charged with 51 felony counts. He allegedly violated his victim's trust and placed them in a financial risk for his own gain. For six years, he conducted investment and retirement related seminars that targeted senior citizens and used various um, schemes to fraudulently gain victims' trust and build friendships in order to steal money from them. Um, he led victims to believe he obtained bonuses from insurance companies that he could apply uh, to their existing life policies and our annuity contracts if they paid their premiums directly to him rather than to the insurance company. He then failed to place the annuity and life insurance policies and also convinced his victims into a fraudulent real estate investment scheme. He forged insurance statements, emails, and letters which led victims to believe the information he relayed to them was true. He would even occasionally, occasionally pay a few investment returns to victims, but those were later seized. Uh, thankfully, he has been taken into custody, and we hope the victims will be able to get some of their money back. So let's talk about staged auto accident fraud. So believe it or not, um, it still occurs. If you get into an accident and something just doesn't feel right, call the police and report it to your insurance company. So let's say you're driving down the street that you're usually familiar with. Um, and it's usually not too busy. And all of a sudden the car in front of you stops short. And then the car next to you, and there's a car next to you, um, so you can't move. And you rear end the car in front of you. So you pull over and the car that was next to you is gone. But the car you rear end it pulls over, the driver gets out and he's holding his neck. And then the front passenger is holding its lower back, then two, three, maybe even four more passengers all exit the sedan. So two different potential frauds can occur here. Then the driver says that he is going to do you a favor by not reporting this to your insurance company and how uh, you can settle this and he'll even follow you to the bank to get cash. That is a red alert. Um, are the passengers also claim bodily injury, injury for a minor fender bender and file claims against your insurance company? Now you're thinking, well, that doesn't hurt me. The insurance company is paying, but your insurance rate will go up because of the bodily injury claim. 
So this is just one example of a stage auto accidents, and there are several versions of this. Again, if your gut tells you something isn't right, take a deep breath. Don't be feel rushed and make any decisions at the accident site. Remember, do not admit fault and do not tell anyone about your insurance policy or the coverage limits that you have. You do have to exchange your insurance carrier information, but nothing more. Call the police and call your insurance company right away. So what are some insurance scam warning signs? Now we all know the saying, if it sounds too good to be true, well then it probably is. So the agents offer free seminars and sites like assistant living centers, retirement communities, our places of worship, our nice restaurants for a free meal. Uh, the agent offers to create or update a living trust in order to see your financial information. They are trying to find new clients that could potentially be worth a lot more money to them than the free living trust that they are offering. They want your financial informa information and it is up to you to guard it. Remember that there is no senior retirement living trust specialist and seniors have more rights when it comes to insurance and it's called Senior Insurance Bill of Rights and the full list can be found on our website. Um, one senior right is that you may review a policy of life, annuity, long-term care or Medicare supplement for 30 days after you receive the policy in order to decide whether you wish to keep the policy. So if you decide that you do not want the policy, you can return it for a full refund, except for variable annuities. So what can you do to avoid becoming a victim of insurance fraud? So step number one is to check the status of the insurance company and agent on our website and make sure that they are in good standing. You should always answer all questions thoroughly and truthfully. Remember that false statements can cancel the policy. Do not leave any blank spaces on an application because dishonest agents can fill in blanks without your approval. Get everything in writing and compare policies. Don't pay with cash and make your checks payable to the insurance company, our, our agency business name, and not in the agent's name. Don't buy coverage you can't afford and only the coverage that you need. Avoid being over or under insured. And most importantly, ask questions. Um, here are some questions that you should be asking. What does the policy cover? What is not covered or excluded? What is the cost and how often? And if you cancel, are there any surrender charges? Is it suitable for you and your situation? And never feel pressured or intimidated and consider having a trusted person with you. Agents know that they should never use high pressure sale tactics and never sign anything that you do not understand. Um, what can you do to protect yourself? So remember, don't engage, don't be polite, be stingy with your personal information. Remember to change your passwords frequently. Simply just hang up the phone and also please report fraud. So if you, su if you suspect fraud, please report it. And there are three organizations here to call. Um, the last is a website that you can learn more about current insurance scams as well. So next up are some resources just for seniors specifically. Senior uh, Gateway is a site on our website. It's a one-stop website intended to provide seniors, their families, and caregivers with the information they need to connect to helpful services and resources to find answers and solve problems. This includes um, information on topics such as avoiding and reporting abuse and neglect, preventing fraud, financial abuse and common scams, healthcare information, and your rights. So please visit 
seniors.insurance.ca.gov. We also have informational guides specifically for seniors. We have a guide on annuities and what seniors need to know, driving for seniors. Um, all of our guides are free and also available in PDF on our website as well. So if you have questions about your current insurance policy, um, new policy, or you've been um, denied coverage, claim or canceled, want to report fraud, please call our consumer hotline at 800-927-4357. Or you may also visit our website at insurance.ca.gov. We have experts that can assist you in different languages. We will never ask you um, for your immigration status as well. Well, that concludes my presentation. And thank you so much for your time. And I hope that you leave today ready to take action to protect yourself. And uh, next, I'd like to introduce Jackie. Jackie. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much, Destiny. And thank you, Stephanie, for the presentation and um, Senator Min for having us. I am Jackie Wiley with the California Department of Financial Protection and Innovation. And I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Um, I, um, my regions that I cover is the Los Angeles County region and my demographics has been um, educating and bringing awareness to older adults for many, many years. A lot of you probably haven't heard of who we are. We are formerly the Department of Business Oversight, and we are a state licensing and regulatory agency with oversight of state financial institutions, products, and professionals, such as state chartered banks and credit unions, some of the financial institutions that you all um, do banking with. If you're owning a home, we license and regulate the mortgage loan originators whom we pay our mortgage um, uh, mortgages to, the servicer, the California finance lenders, escrow agents. We also license and regulate the PACE administrators. So we kind of go hand in hand with what Stephanie was saying about some of the home improvement um, programs that are being uh, or solicited to older adults and to others as well. This is just a, a small list of um, whom we license and whom we regulate. The DFPI licensed over 296,000 financial um, institutions, products, and professionals. Um, so if you are in the business of um, doing a mortgage or refinancing or doing an investment, working with an investment advisor, advisor broker dealers, we're the agency you need to come to. And how what is our role? The role of the DFPI is that we're examining the companies to ensure that they're in compliance with state and federal laws. We're taking action against those that are operating illegally and using unlawful, deceptive, and abusive practices, which we all know has increased, especially since the pandemic. And we're investigating a lot of consumer complaints, and that has increased um, tenfold by coming into our unit. A lot of people are um, falling victim and falling prey to a lot of frauds and scams. So my job with the DFPI is, again, being a targeted outreach specialist, is to educate Californians on how to help avoid becoming a victim and to help make financial um, safe to make safe financial decisions when it comes to um, solicitations. We're doing this, we're promoting consumer awareness. And we, by one of the things we're doing today is um, providing a free virtual presentation. We also do free in-person presentations and all our services are free. Again, we're a state government agency. Or on our website, the DFPI, we feature a host of um, um, important information. You can go to our website and get information to see what we're doing and how we are trying to shut down or to correct bad actors. Um, you can see information about our news and consumer alerts. Um, you know, the innovation part of our name, the, the Department of Financial Prediction and Innovation, it kind of stands for um, the new technologies. There's a lot of new technology coming up and a lot of entrepreneurs who are creating new apps and um, and then that we're not familiar with. And so we are um, crypto being one of them. And a lot of people are falling, um, uh, 
prey to a lot of crypto scams. We have a great crypto scam tracker that we're um, using to, um, to track that. And you can go on our website and also find out where we're going to be and a lot of investor education as well. The publication that you see on the um, screen right now is our Protect Yourself from Fraud all our, pre all our publications are free. Um, we have them in multiple languages. Right now we have um, Spanish and English and we are in the process of updating the booklet. It has great information on the inside talking about some of the scams that I will be talking about today as well as other. It has a comprehensive resource guide in the booklet because sometimes we don't always know who to contact and what agency to go to. And we also have a YouTube channel so if you um, are not able to attend when the presentations are um, taking place, we have a host of recorded presentations and webinars on our site as well. So let's get into what you heard from Stephanie from the Contractor State License Board. And, you know, there's a lot of people who are doing home improvement. And then she mentioned um, solar panels. Um, a lot of people don't have the opportunity to just outright pay for home improvement. So there are several financing programs that are being solicited um, and PACE being one of them, which stands for Property Assessed Clean Energy. So if you are a homeowner and you are looking for um, financing assistance to help um, pay for your improvements, PACE is of financing, but it's only for energy efficient and water saving improvements. But what we are finding is that a lot of older adults and even um, not just older adults, there are people who are not understanding what this is. It is an actual loan because the information has been misrepresented. They come at you with the no money down and no out of pocket expenses. So of course it appears to be free, but if you stop and think about it, somebody has to be paying for it. The omission has been that the loan um, is going to act onto your property taxes and that places a lien on your home. So when you get ready to sell it, you need to have paid off this home improvement loan. Um, so please, 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 it's imperative when you are thinking about doing a, a home improvement and you are seeking financial um, um, help um, through a program, please go to our website to gain information. And most importantly, it is very important to use caution when you are being solicited with these home improvement financing programs. And it's important for all to verify. Before signing the contract, be sure to not only check with the contractor straight license board about the contractor you're gonna use, but also come to the DFPI's website to verify the information and the legitimacy of the lender whom is going to be taking your money for this loan. And then before you even do anything, come to our website and obtain information about these home improvement financing programs, about the risk and the laws that they should be following so that you will be empowered and have questions ready and available for when and if you decide to use one. So let's get into it. Oops, sorry. So, <clears throat> I wanted to share that there are, these are the common methods of contacts that scammers um, use to contact us all, not just older adults. And I have to make that clear. Older adults are prime targets, yes, but anyone is susceptible to becoming a victim of fraud. And so, you know, some of the new terminology you may hear is vishing, smishing, and phishing. And it simply means contacting you either through the telephone, our emails, or text messages. But what these all have in common, it's always about a sense of urgency and they want you to act fast. So you don't think about it, you act fast, you get nervous and you respond right away to the phone call, the email or the text message. But I implore to you to not respond to any of these attempts to contact you. And I'm gonna say this throughout my whole presentation, you don't know who is on the other line. You don't really know who the email is coming from. Go to the source, okay? 
So who's calling? Every day, all day, we all get phone calls from solicitors or somebody offering you something. But these are the things that I wanted to point out in our presentation today, what is trending and that what we are hearing about. I want to start with government and business imposters. This has really increased um, and a lot of people are receiving phone calls from maybe a business that they've heard of or they recognize on their call or caller ID or from a supposed government agency. We're receiving phone calls that indicate that uh, the IRS is calling you. You'll get a phone call or a voice message saying that your social security card has been compromised or frozen and to please call this number back immediately. And just because the caller ID shows the name of the, of the company, please don't fall for that. That is a spoofing trick. We should all know and please, please remember government agencies will not and do not call you. So if you get that phone call that says that it's the IRS, please know that it's not. If they want to contact you, they're going to send you a letter in the mail. And if you get the call about the Social Security, please go to the source meaning don't use the number that is left on the machine, or if you happen to pick it up and it's a voice recorded, please don't press one or two to activate the call. This is another way of gaining your personal information. We're hearing a lot about the utility scam. You should know that utility companies will not call you from a supposed delinquent unit to tell you that your bill has been is past due, you will again get notified with the next bill through the mail. So this is another ploy to gain your personal information as well as your financial information. Financial institutions, maybe you bank with ABC Bank um, and you see that on your viewer and you'll get the phone call. Maybe they're calling to say that they're verifying information or updating their records or offering you um, a lower APR for whatever the case may be. Just because the viewer shows a name that you recognize, please don't provide your personal information. Again, this is an incoming call. We need to proceed with caution, hang up and go to the source yourself. We are hearing and receiving an influx of debt collector phone calls uh, or, and complaints um, that people are receiving harassing phone calls from debt collectors, and some of them don't even owe the debt. If you receive a phone call with someone instructing you or telling you that there is a outstanding payment of some sort um, has come across their desk, um, and if you pay half of it now, they will um, close the case and all will be rectified. We have had individuals who have not um, owned that, that, that payment or that bill that they're stating that you do owe. We have had individuals complain about the harassment phone calls, the threatening phone calls. Please, please verify your information and do not fall for the fact that you know you don't owe it, but they're trying to persuade you that you do. Please file the complaint with the department pertaining to the debt collector um, harassment calls. Credit debit card purchases. We're all either credit cards to make purchases, and that is a good thing when you use your credit card because it's a better level of protection should um, um, someone um, gain information from your card and start making un, un, um, purchases that you are unaware of. The protection is, is that they will investigate it through the credit card company and more than likely that money will come back. But when we are using our debit cards, I'm, I'm suggesting that instead of using um, debit and punching in your PIN number, go through credit by pressing the green button why they are still skimmers that can be attached to the devices. We don't see them. Um, they were known to be showing up on the outsides at gas stations and at ATM machines, but now they are also showing up on the insides, insides of stores. So again, if you are shopping using your debit card, which is attached to our checking account, try to bypass that PIN number by going to the green button and saying that you want to make the purchase credit versus debit. 
Now, a lot of us have heard about this grandparent or relative scam because it is not new, but it has become rampant, but there has become a new twist on it. And that phone call of someone calling in a panicky voice telling you, grandma, grandma, I have been or I am in trouble, I need money, a relative call in the same way, someone that is in distress and dire need of money, and they don't want you to contact anyone else. Well, before you do that, please verify that your grandpa, your relative or family or friend member that is calling with this panic and distress um, situation is not in harm's way, but they have heightened it now. And I know, and hopefully that you have been listening to the news and have been seeing a lot of information about AI, which is artificial intelligence. It is now ramped up to um, where people are cloning your voice or a friend's voice, your family's voice. Um, and if you get a phone call, it could sound like the relative or sound like the person that you know. But please remember about this AI, this artificial um, that means verify before you believe the story. Do not respond to any of these attempts to contact you please go to the source. And that includes um, if someone leaves a voice message um, or you're on the phone and want, they want you to press one or two. If they know who you are, if you know who they are, they're going to leave a voice message and you're going to be able to recognize the number or the, the call. This is an example that I like to share because the first thing is this is an email that um, that came through and it's from supposedly the Bank of America. The first thing you see is the Bank of America logo um, and that is what they want you to see. Please don't always believe that the email from a known organization or financial institution is that whom it is coming from. There's a host of errors in here, grammatical errors. They have embedded um, hidden links um, under the Bank of America logo. Um, so don't always believe that that is official. Um, go to the source. This is another example of a smishing text message, which stands for short message services. You may receive one of these saying that there's unusual activity on your online banking. So please log into this um, link here or that your, um, your bank card is temporary locked. Please call this number. Please don't respond to these short message um, services. Go to the source yourself. All phone calls, text messages, and emails are very frightening. And of course, it makes one nervous. But do not respond to clicking or responding to the phone number that they have provided. And if you know that you're not expecting a package, please don't click on an email saying that, um, that the package is due to arrive and to track it here. So that is another ploy, another can of worms that will be opened up to gain your personal information. Nowadays, this is a new way to transfer money. People still use Western Union, um, but nowadays we are all, or most people are transferring money through the apps, which are Venmo, Cash App, PayPal, and Zelle. If you look inside the blue box here, this was a text message that was received on someone's phone um, asking if they had attempted to make a Zelle payment, and they replied no. I'm letting you know right now to never reply yes or no, um, because as soon as you do, you're going to get a phone call from said financial institution to help you rectify the payment that supposedly have come out of your account. And while you are providing your personal and banking information, they are depleting your bank account. And this is the bottom line for this. If you get that email, you should automatically know that it is a big red flag sign because you have to perform the action when you send PayPal, when you send um, Zelle when you send um, money through Cash App or Venmo. So please know that you have to do the action and don't fall for the email. Cyber safety. Um, a lot of copycat sites, so we need to know to hover over the links that we are um, 
um, looking at um, and making sure that it's the dot com and not the dot con, um, making sure that it is the correct uh, site that you should be on, should you be shopping or waiting for an email response from something that you've done online. Make sure that you are using a secure network. The lock should be closed, which is shown at the top right corner um, here in this photo. And you should see the S, which stands for secure when you are um, searching online. And again, into the practice of hovering over the URLs if you are um, responding to an email or if you're curious about where it's coming from. Um, because again, the unknown um, embedded emails can be um, not seen. I'm thinking about doing the two-step verification, which is another um, layer of protection when we are logging onto our computers or onto different sites, namely our banking sites. It will provide you with a uh, verification code to make sure that it is you that is attempting to log in. Changing our passwords, um, maybe it's time to do that. Maybe you've had passwords for a very long period of time. Um, it's time to change them. And please be mindful that social media scams are very rampant. If you don't know who you're talking to or conversing with, don't befriend them. Don't allow them into your social media network or space. And with that being said, romance scams are, are still ramping up. 70,000 people in 2022, not just older adults, have been taken victim by a romance scam. And it also happens on dating sites. Um, but it's a staggering $1.3 billion that um, people have, and older adults are included mostly, um, have lost that kind of money. So if you're professing love or someone professing love to you on, um, please proceed with caution. What can you do to help yourself prevent falling victim to fraud? We're saying again, never give out your personal information unless you have initiated the contact. And that stands for don't return phone calls left on your voice messages. Unknown caller shows up on your um, phone or a number you don't recognize, don't answer it. And if you do, hang up, don't provide information, whether it's of a known entity or not. You don't know who is on the other end of the line. Government agencies do not and will not call you. Please know that. And that also goes for police, sheriff, and the fire departments. They don't call us to solicit. Don't click on the links that are sent via text or emails. And again, to avoid using your PIN um, number when using your um, debit cards, press the green button and go directly to credit. If you're still a check writer, my suggestion is to purchase an anti-fraud pen and it will say it on the packet. And why? There are people who have stolen checks um, and could check the information off of the check, but an anti-fraud pen can prevent that from happening. And you can purchase them at Staples, Office Max, and places like that. If you know that you are no longer going to open up any new credit at this time, um, place a freeze on it. That's an extra layer of protection. If you need to remove it for reason because you need to check a, um, a credit score, you're making a purchase that requires um, checking your score, then you can um, lift it as well. But at the same time, <clears throat> monitor all statements that you get in the mail and don't just discard um, um, applications because you don't want to please tear it up because that is one form of how people be we are and then open up new credit um, in your name. Logging out, not Xing out of all websites and on your personal um, banking sites and please verify that there is an issue before you depart with your money. Always go to the source, meaning taking your credit card out of, out of your wallet and calling that number, calling the number that Medi-Cal and Medicare, calling your financial institution yourself, whether you've gotten a phone call from them or not. <clears throat> How can you contact the Department of Financial Protection and Innovation? Learn more about us. Here's our website. We also have a toll-free number that have live representative answer calls, not asking for status and multi-language capability. 
um, email us and then please think about subscribing to our consumer connection letters so that you can stay abreast of what we are doing to try to help Californians um, from falling victim um, to fraud. Thank you for allowing me to share. Excellent. Uh, thank you, Jackie. Thank you, Stephanie and, and Destiny. So um, we have a little bit of time for some question and answers. And so uh, folks have put in some questions. Uh, if you guys have a second, could we uh, kind of go through some of those? Um, so we, uh, Mark uh, reached out to us. Um, he is um, he has a concern with uh, internet service providers, um, specifically that they're able to, you know, can they charge for additional spam protection, that, that sort of thing? I believe the answer to that is unfortunately yes, but I understand the frustration, but is that kind of from what you all understand, is that how that works? I, I agree with you that the answer is yes, that they can um, charge for that. But for us, we need to ask questions. Is there any additional charges? How much is it going to be? How much is my bill going to increase? And things of that nature. And one of the things that I find is that um, reading the small print, we don't do that. So asking questions um, to answers until it's and before it's too late when you sign up for a service, always look at what it's saying. Um, a lot of people fall prey to, um, 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 I'm just going to say, um, direct TV, you know, $9.99 um, right now, but then you didn't see that it's only for one year. Gotcha. And Mark, I share your concern. Uh, we're neighbors, apparently. Uh, we have the similar lack of choices internet provider. So I get where you're coming from there. He also had a question, too, about, um, you know, like receiving spam calls, you know, do not call list. I understand that's an FTC thing, which is a federal government because, you know, the phone calls go across state lines. So that's federally regulated. Um, but is that correct for like from the position of uh, your expertise? The thing to do there is really don't answer. Um, you know, don't answer the call, don't don't speak, you can just feel free to hang up. Is that the advice to give people? Even though I know they're still going to be getting those sort of annoying spam calls that they're just going to have to be ignoring. Yes, um, unfortunately, we're always going to receive solicitation calls. You can block the number, you can delete the number, and the 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 um, nature of the scammer is to wear an individual down. So they can you can block one number and they can call with another number. And as far as the do not call registry list, that is administered through the um, Federal Trade Commission. So that question would basically go to them. Um, and what they want us to be able to do is to to capture the number um, and, and then report it. But again, it's hard to track when they're um, using one number one day and another number in the afternoon. So yeah, unfortunately, we are always going to continue to get these solicitation calls, but for our protection, um, hanging up and not answering, unfortunately. Yeah, I get the frustration with that too. Um, so we have a Mar this is Mark with a C. And then um, are any of you seeing uh, issues with uh, gift card scams, specifically, you know, uh, trying to solicit a person to like a go buy a Target gift card, you know, that sort of thing? Is that something you guys are running into in your uh, different departments? Um, I was at a presentation not too long ago and an individual did share that she purchased a gift card. Um, and she put the money on it, but when she submitted it to her person whom she bought it for, there was no money on there. And, and she actually had a hard time dealing with the establishment that she bought the um, gift card from. So we are seeing or hearing about um, gift card purchases. Um, I don't even know how to, what to say about it other than we just, have to, I don't get gift cards that's in the front. I kind of go in the back, in the middle. I don't know whether that makes a difference or not. Um, yeah, we just have to file the complaint and, it, and, it, and it's, uh, it's, un, it's, un, it's unfortunate that the store doesn't um, acknowledge the fact that that happened because they didn't take um, her complaint as, as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, and, and Mark, I've just, you know, I've had that experience also. I mean, with the PTA, my daughter's school, when we run that. We had a, someone had, you know, tried to send us a phishing thing to tell a, tell our secretary, our treasurer to go buy some gift cards for the school, which was like nothing that we would normally do. And so we just caught that because he just called me and said, hey, is this from you? And it wasn't. But, you know, that's the thing that's out there. So be careful about people asking you to buy gift cards. And one other thing I want to say to that, if someone is instructing you to make a payment, 
with a guard. That's a huge red flag. So don't get in the habit of buying into that. We don't normally pay bills with a gift card, you know. So if someone is instructing you to do that, that uh, should raise a red flag. Yeah. Um, so uh, let's see. Uh, we have a um, oh, and then a couple more questions here because I want to be respectful for everyone's times. Uh, so Carol had written in uh, wondering a COVID test. I know we've been getting a lot of those in the mail. Is um, have you guys been seeing like scams with that where it's been a, a fake COVID test or, you know, I, I know this is probably maybe more of a question for the departments that are sending out those tests, but how can you make sure those things are real? Destiny, you want to address that? Um, yeah, I would, I would suggest um, calling um, uh, report fraud, COVID-19 fraud to the Office of um, Inspector General. Um, their website is oig hha.gov or you can call them at 1-800-447-8477. Um, gotcha. I appreciate that. Um, and then let's see, uh, a couple of questions. One was like, will there be a replay for this? And the answer to that is yes. Uh, so it'll be on the center's website. Um, you know, it'll be on the front page under latest videos and we'll have the whole thing. And then uh, uh, Linda had uh, written in too, just to say that, hey, there's a lot of information here. Um, is it a way to kind of break these up maybe in the future or like, you know, make it a little bit digestible for folks, which uh, Linda, I totally agree with you. And there's a lot of great information, but there's a lot of scams out there, right? Um, so this is, this will be available in archived video. So if you want to go back to something, you'll have a chance. I believe it will be up shortly, you know, shortly after this closes, but definitely by tomorrow. Um, so I'd encourage people to take a look at that. If they think they missed anything. Um, and then just check to make sure. Oh, uh, and then we had one question about the uh, uh, the for anti-fraud pins for ch for checks. So Jackie, that sounded really interesting to me. Could you like talk a little bit more about that? Like where you get them, how they work? So, you know, we still have people who um, dumpster dive and we also have the who go around and possibly can steal your mail. So if I've written a check or let's say Macy's for $50 and I've signed it and my check gets stolen. There is a very simple, easily purchased solution to check wash, meaning they could check wash the information off of the check, make the 50 to 500, change the Macy's to me. And the bank is gonna honor it because they didn't move anything. They didn't check wash your signature. So to prevent that from happening, God forbid, there is an anti-fraud gel pen. Um, and some people say, well, what about a regular gel pen? Well, these are anti-fraud gel pens and you can purchase them at Office Max, Staples, any supply store. And you'll know that it's the anti-fraud because on the packet, it's going to say it anti-fraud on the packet. So you'll know that that's the correct pen. And I keep it with my checkbook. When I write a check, I, I'm definitely making sure that I'm using that. I'm signing important documents with that. So it, it's a really good thing to have and to be aware of. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Appreciate that. Yeah, that's a, something I just learned right there, and it seems like a great idea. Um, so, and also just thank you everyone for your time and, and coming out here and these great questions that you sent in. Um, you can always reach out to our office too if you ever run into something. I know there's a comment that Wendy put in there about a letter that she got from the state teachers retirement system. Wendy, give us our give our office a call. Um, I can try to confirm that for you to make sure that was legitimate or not. Um, our number here at the office is 949-223-5472. We're always here to help. We'll get you pointed the right direction also. Um, so with that, I think Thank you everyone for coming out and I hope everyone has a great rest of their day. Thank you for having us. Take care.